Hey everyone, it's Irene Lyon here. Welcome to this video, to this channel, and to this entire world of healing trauma, nervous system health, and all things neuroplasticity. Today's video is going to be a bit of a breakdown of some of the practical components of my work that one might um, enter into if they're going into my free resources, my online offerings, my classes, my programs, etc. Um, I'm not going to talk to the specifics of those things. Those are all on my site and you can read through and, and look at them there. Um, but there's sometimes a confusion around what my neurosensory exercises are. I'm going to say that one more time. Neurosensory exercises. Now these are, that is a word I made up and it's what I use to describe the practical, I call them lessons, within my free audios, my programs, my drop-in classes, etc. So I'm going to talk about that in a second. The other thing I want to mention, and this is often asked of me when I'm on interviews and podcasts, is people want to know how I'm teaching people and how I'm doing SE, so somatic experiencing. That's the work of Peter Levine, something I am trained in, wonderful work. But they often see that I'm trained in SE and then there's an assumption that my neurosensory exercises are SE in an audio format. Now, there's a half truth to that because of course, the SE world and what I know theoretically and practically from learning that body of work is embedded in the practical stuff that I teach, um, but it's not everything. And so just a quick little history. Before this moment in time, I was trained in the fitness world. So fitness, rehab, exercise science. I was then um, trained and studied the work of Dr. Moshe Feldenkrais, um, got into that work due to my own injuries. It's a beautiful form of movement, uh, body, mind, environment, connection, um, practice that really gets us back into relearning how to move our bodies in relationship to obviously gravity, the floor, our, our skeleton, our movements, balance, all that stuff. Um, the workshops that I teach called Up and Down are based on the Feldenkrais method. However, um, when I teach, I'm infusing the SE principles in that too. So it's really tough to say this part of my work is this and this per part of my work is that. It's all blended together. In addition to studying somatic experiencing um, and being an SE practitioner and SEP. I've also done intensive studies with Kathy Kane and her form of work she calls somatic practice. She also studied with Peter Levine and she's faculty or she used to be a faculty. I'm not sure if she still is, but was faculty for a very long time in the SE world. Um, but she branched off and created her own form of work involving touch and working with what I call the stress organs. And I'll talk about those in a second and really helping restore regulation. So nervous system regulation and safety back to the human organism. So my um, creation, if you will, of these neurosensory exercises is based on my learnings and my practical know-how teaching movement at that fitness um, Feldenkrais level. And then the theoretical underpinnings of SE, things like learning how to go slower, this would be titration, small little bits, orienting, um, connecting to the environment, which is orienting. And then of course, the work that I've studied with Kathy, somatic practice, that is embedded also within these neurosensory exercises. So there's sort of, we'll say three things going on at the same time when I am recording a lesson or when I'm teaching live. Now, I'm gonna use an analogy. In my fitness world days, we would kind of say that there's different components to fitness. There would be um, aerobic capacity or cardiovascular capacity. There would be um, strength, so keeping our muscles and bones strong. Flexibility, so making sure that our joints have good range of motion. Um, there would be power. Um, so the ability to explode and go fast uh, and move through space, agility, balance. So there's all these components of physical fitness that one might want to work on to just 
become healthier and stronger, not just in their muscles or with their heart, but everything. So take that concept and then let's transfer it to working with the nervous system. And the neurosensory exercises have many different tiers. So for example, if one were to um, download one of my audio samplers, and I hope you have or you will, I guide you through some basic stuff like connecting to the ground, connecting to the environment, maybe noticing the breath, maybe doing some gentle touch, maybe feeling the feet on the ground. We could say that these are sort of the, the first level of neurosensory awareness exercises. We're sort of dipping our toe into the waters and testing out the basics, really sort of the ABCs, let's say. From there, we would go a little further into maybe bringing in some movement. So again, depending on what you've done with me, you may have experienced me guiding you through some very gentle movement. It's not movement to exercise, but it's movement to start to feel how the nervous system, how our brain and central nervous system connects with the demand, say pick up the arm or move the pelvis or turn the head, and then to feel the way in which we execute, the way in which we initiate the movement. Are we holding our breath? Are we um, always going to one side? Um, do we clench our gut? Do we tighten our, our belly, what, you know, our belly, our groin? Noticing all the nuance within our physiology with movement. And then of course, how that movement might play out is dependent on what I'm teaching. So that would be blending in some of the Feldenkrais knowledge that I have acquired through my trainings and teachings, etc. So that might be another sort of level is we're going to bring in movement, but at the same token, as I teach, I'm still reminding you, the person experiencing it, are you aware of the environment around you? Can you feel the ground under you? Um, are you able to have your eyes open and see um, what's happening with your breath? Are you hearing anything in the environment? I mean, there's just so many infinite possibilities that we can go with these neurosensory exercises. The next level, if you will, if we think about another component of nervous system health, um, is working with, as I mentioned a second ago, the stress organs. So this is something that one would start to learn in my higher level programs like Smart Body, Smart Mind, or if you were to work one-on-one -on -one with a practitioner who's trained in Kathy Kane's work. So working with the level of the kidneys and adrenals, because again, or I'll remind everyone, the, the adrenals secrete our stress chemicals, namely adrenaline and cortisol. There are a few others, but those are some of the main ones. We notice a threat, we feel a threat, we perceive a threat, and the system drops down and says, release stress chemicals, get ready for action, let's fight, let's run. And then of course, if we can't, the system goes, okay, we better shut down, we better freeze, we better stay really still. I'm really oversimplifying this, but I hope you get the point. So let's just say that someone has been living in a state of chronic stress, we would call it autonomic dysregulation, and this fight, flight, freeze bundle is just constantly running our physiological show. By going in and working with intention and visualization, and of course, um, sometimes touch or personal touch to that kidney adrenal area, we start to kind of soften it up a little bit. We start to get friendly with it. We're not going to say, come on, you kidney adrenal, just be brave and don't fear and just suck it up. We don't do that. We listen, we attend, we get curious. We might um, imagine it shifting in subtle ways. I often teach imagining these kidneys floating in some warm, salty, beautiful seawater or a bath. So it's not forcing it to stop maybe what it's so used to, but we're just giving it a little resource, a little nudge to help it realize that it just might not have to be on guard all the time. Another area is the gut and how that gut is listening to the environment, how that gut might be clenched. So we may, or I would in my neurosensory exercises, guide you, the listener, through 
tuning in to the gut. And it isn't the stomach necessarily or the colon or the large intestine or the gallbladder. It's wherever your intention and, and um, attention goes. And you might use your hands. I know you can't see my belly, but put them there and listen. And it's not about massaging or manipulation. It's about intention, attention. But then, this is where it gets a little more complex, blending in the basics that you would start at kind of that ABC level. So as you're feeling that gut, can you also sense the environment around you? Can you feel the ground under you? Are you aware of your breath? What are your eyes doing? Are they opened? Are they closed? Would you rather them be open or would you rather them have them closed? So we're sensing these neurological pieces and we're also attending to our physiology, our movement, our impulses, you know, as you're say, maybe doing that gut awareness lesson, um, is there a desire to just get really, are you getting sleepy or is there a little bit of survival stress? Some might call it anxiety popping up. What is that? Another area of the stress organs we work with, the brain stem, which is where the brain connects to the spinal cord, little stalk there. Um, that is an area that gets very, very tight and hypervigilant when we are obviously in a stressful situation. But again, if we were brought up in constant state of fear and stress and, and just scary things happening to us, that brainstem might be so vigilant, it's got like a vice grip on it and it ain't letting anyone in. And so again, we don't wanna go in and like try to manipulate it and force it to relax. We're just gonna start to notice it in these neurosensory exercises. But the reason why we don't start off the bat with these more advanced practices that I've just outlined, the stress organs, is we want to make sure there's a little bit of foundation set. Can a person sense the environment around them? Can they sense their feet? Can they connect with their own skin? Um, can they notice their breath? Now, of course, for some people, they might be able to enter into those higher level practices right off the bat because of their previous training, their experience with mind body uh, methodologies, et cetera, et cetera. But of course, um, we've got to start in the way I work at the basic level and then build and build and build. So the neurosensory exercises can have that component. And then if I take it one step further, and this is gonna be a bit more advanced if you're brand new here, so be sure to check out my videos and articles on the five stages of neuroplastic healing sequencing. I know that's a big, big one. But in that, one of, the, one of the stages is something called neurodifferentiation. And neurodifferentiation, neurodifferentiation means that we are being more differentiated, more neurologically complex. So when someone sort of has graduated, if you will, and gone through these increments, we might bring in some more movement of the spine in that Feldenkraisian uh, kind of ethos of how I would teach gentle movement, noticing, etc. But then I might add in, what's it like to sense the kidneys and adrenals as you're doing this? What's it like to bring attention to the heart area? It's another area we work with. What's it like to notice um, the joints of the body? Again, another area that we work with. What's it like to see the room around you as you do this movement? And can you notice your breath? So we're multitasking these different layers of neurosensory awareness as we graduate and get more differentiated and more complex in the practice. So for example, someone who is going through Smart Body, Smart Mind, my 12 week program, as we progress through the, um, the 10 modules, the 10 labs, we are going from basic ABC one, two, three stuff. We're adding in the stress organs, then we're adding in different parts of the body, and then we're adding in a bit more differentiation. So, I hope that makes sense. I wanted to just describe a little bit of this process and to say this is more, this is more than the SE somatic experiencing principles. It's more than just the Feldenkrais work and it's more than just Kathy Kane's work, what I've learned through her, the somatic practice. We're blending it all together. And then of course that blending has different 
levels, different increments of complexity, depending on where someone is, what poor program or class or online um, resource they're using from me. But if I ever say neurosensory exercise and that's what you're gonna get, you're gonna get some practice with me, Irene, it's somewhere within that category of um, increment, tier, noticing, body, environment, and then bringing it all together. All right, I hope this has been useful for some of you who are, who are new to me, or maybe you're just like, I still don't understand what these exercises are. I use the term exercise because that's what we know for when we do a practice, but it is not exercise in the sense of being intense and getting our heart rate up. It's about how we are cultivating our consciousness, but also our attention to our biology, our movement, our awareness, our intention, our attention, our breath, which tracks our physiology. And then of course, all of the somatic experiences, that's where Peter's stuff comes in, all of the somatic experiences of sensation and feeling and bubbling and tingling and, and cooling and maybe tears or anger or frustration, right? So that's where the theory and learning the theory, because I'm all about the theory and the practical, by having the theory come in, it informs what we might experience at the somatic level when we are doing the neurosensory exercises. Okay, so here's my challenge for all of you. If you have yet to try one of my neurosensory exercises, the easiest way, and I'll post all the links below, is to go to my site, go to the free resource page and audio samplers. There's a couple of them there. You just download them, you press play, and you, you experience. And then, of course, if you've already done that and you want to go to another level, try one of my drop-in classes. We do those once a month, but there's also all the replays. And if you've already done those, you want to go a little further and get more in-depth education on board, check out the 21-Day Nervous System Tune-Up. You can start that anytime. And then, of course, if you've done that and you kind of want to go the full level and get into these stress organ practices, and these more differentiated practices where I bring in breath and more sophisticated movement. That is what smart, smart body, smart mind is for. We run that once a year in March. Um, we'll be coming up in 2022, so I'm dating this video. Um, that's how you can progress through these practices. And then, of course, um, another level, um, and when we get back into doing workshops in person, the Up Down Workshop is a great way to just blend it all together. Um, we have been doing some online classes, so I'll also post those below and you can try those out. Um, the in-person experience is always, in my opinion, better, but we're just taking a hiatus on those for now. Hope to get going in the future with those. Thank you for listening. Thanks for um, learning. And like I said, your job is to go in and try at least one of these. Start with the free free resources, the audio samplers. Give it a try and let us know in the comments below. Let my team and I know um, if this has been useful, this breakdown, and what you experience when you go into these neurosensory exercises. Take, care, take good care and we will see you next time.